So once you're inside your Filmmaker VFX suite inside After Effects, you want to drag and drop your video file or sequence into the placeholder. So now we're going to go back into our main suite. I'm going to highlight the control panel and let's take a look at the uh, control panel here. I do want to note that I gave you a five minute default in your timeline and you can adjust that timeline by just uh, taking your work bar area here and uh, and bringing it down to shorten the time. However, if you have to extend the time, uh, I do suggest that you go to aescripts.com and there is a script called Comp Setter. And once you have Comp Setter installed into After Effects, and access your Comp Setter script, and just change the duration to extend uh, past the five minute mark for whatever uh, time you need. Okay, so below the control panel, uh, I created a little frames per second toggle there, and you can turn that on and uh, decrease your frames if you're trying to create more of a uh, old fashioned silent film or whole movie look or trying to manipulate the frames in any way. So moving up, we have uh, our first category here, which is film grains. And this is gonna give you a variety of different uh, film grain styles, starting with uh, light, tight, medium, coarse, 35 millimeter, super 16. So when you're applying a grain, you just wanna to toggle the threshold here. What you're gonna notice is with the heavier grain, such as your 16 and Super 8 and your coarse, you're gonna have a thicker grain. However, if you go to this grain light and tight and you toggle that light and tight threshold, you're gonna see that you actually will tighten down the, the coarse grain beneath it. All right, so moving on to our color suite starting with our color processing category. Here we have our uh, color enhance, and below that we have our uh, bleach threshold, our cross processing threshold, and then our technicolor process, which uh, I feel has a really authentic uh, three strip technicolor look that you've seen in the 50s and uh, early 60s. Do note that this technicolor threshold does take a little bit longer to uh, render in the process, so you might find it that it slows down your uh, workflow just a little bit. Moving down, we have our film stocks category, and we have our Kodak stocks and our Fuji stocks. And you can just toggle the threshold here. And below that, we have our uh, vignettes. So we can uh, just toggle the threshold of our vignette to bring that up. And then if you want, change the color. And then we have a vignette blur. As you can see, it's just going to uh, blur out the edges there. Uh, moving on, we have our light leak designs, and these are just a variety of authentic light leaks that I shot. Next is our real flickers category. Now you're gonna see a real flicker effector, and what that's gonna do is if you check that uh, effector on, and toggle the threshold of any of these flicker designs, your footage is going to react to the actual flicker. So you might see a little bit of a sway or distortion depending on the, uh, the flicker design. Here we have a uh, overexposure. Our light streaks. And then we have our uh, sprocket light malfunction. And again, we have an effector for that, which is just gonna help our uh, footage get a little bit distorted, give it a little more uh, authentic, realistic look. Moving below, we have our damage designer category. And taking a look at our first section, we have organic light damage design. And these are gonna be lighter film damages, and they're gonna have more of a uh, subtle organic quality to them. And below that, we're gonna have, have our uh, heavy damage design. Since some of this damage is, is pretty heavy. 
thus the uh, heavy damage design. And you're going to want probably your footage to actually react into distort with the, uh, the hair follicles and uh, whatever other junk is, is going on in the uh, frame design. And below that, you're going to have your splices. Below that, we have our discoloration. You can just uh, fade the color here. Or or you can just change the actual color dis uh, discoloration. Below that is our blur, and we have our uh, focal blur, which is going to uh, just bring our footage out of focus. And if you want to really re uh, randomize your, your blurring, just check this uh, out of focus, random. So here we have our old movies designer. And all you have to do is check on the design that you want. And each design here has its own effector so that your footage can kind of react and distort to the content. And at the very bottom of this category, you are gonna see an option to resize the height and width of your footage. So you're gonna to wanna to toggle this back slightly. That way you'll have a little bit less crop. Otherwise, you just you'll be full of crop. So next, we're going to have our shake, rattle, and roll, and there we have a quake control. So you can just toggle that threshold. The higher you go, the more you're going to see that your footage is going to react and have this earthquake effect going on. And below that, you're going to see some lens quake designs with effectors, and these are just going to have little uh, corner shakes or side shakes to your lens. And uh, the effectors are going to allow your footage to react to those uh, specific quakes. Next, we have our jitter and weave. And this is just going to do exactly what it says, is jitter and weave our footage. So you just want to play with the speed and the amount that uh, the footage jitter and weaves. So next is our projector control. And here we have our projector zoom control, so you can zoom in and out of the footage if you feel you need. And then below that, we're gonna have our sprocket off hinge controller. So everything, of course, can be animated in the suite. Uh, and in this case, with the sprocket, you are gonna probably wanna animate this on and off since uh, if you just apply a value, it's just gonna continuously roll off hinge. Uh, in this case, if I were to animate this, you can play around with the values. I'm just going to go down the timeline for a second. Start at uh, zero value. I'm just going to move down a second. And I'm going to change this to a uh, to four. So I'm going to go down another second. And I'm actually going to roll this to uh, a negative three. It's going to go backwards now. So again, positive, negative, it's going to uh, move the, the sprocket back and forth. And I'm just going to reset this back to zero. So the effect is going to simply be that your footage is going to go back and forth for a few seconds and then reset back to normal. And you can create higher values, of course, but I, I found that keeping the value under uh, 6% has the best effect, in my opinion. But... Uh, Hey, go nuts. Play, play, play. All right, moving on. We have our camera depth of field. So some of the effects you're really going to see a depth of field be applied, and, and more than likely it's going to be with our lens dirt. So I'm just going to go into my lens dirt section for a second. I'm going to do a botch job. And then you can just check on the depth of fields and increase the depth of field blur. And you're gonna see that dirt is gonna now start to go out of focus. So the more you increase your uh, depth of field blur, the more it's gonna go out of focus. And then finally, we have our film burn section. And these are authentic film burns that I shot practically burning down my house. I didn't really almost burn my house down. 
I did burn my finger though. So in order to burn your footage, you want to just turn the burn it on. And then you have a variety of different burn designs here. I'm going to toggle this threshold up to 100%. You can mix and match burns if you wish. But remember that you want to slide this burn uh, comp right here to its starting position. And you're going to see a little marker there. And uh, just slide it to where you want the burn to begin. And you're going to see your footage start to react and burn away.